the upanishad series meditation the end of temptation we are in the season of the holidays also known as the christmas season it is important that we celebrate all the seasons this is the season which is celebrated in the memory of jesus jesus is tremendously beautiful however his beauty is of a totally different kind it is his own and differs from that of gautam the buddha buddha is silent without revolution Jesus is silent with a rebellion around him this has to be remembered only then you will be able to penetrate into his heart why did jesus became so significant why did he appeal to so many people all through these centuries if you look deep you will find in jesus he has something of the wild in him he is not a garden he is a wilderness he is raw not refined you love him and you will know you will feel him and you will know buddha is very cultured and very refined just opposite to jesus he has something buddha has something of kingly splendor in him kingly splendor jesus is from the village the son of a carpenter uneducated buddha is educated buddha is so subtle that you will miss him he is more than you but you are not there with jesus bridges easily created with jesus bridge is created very easy he is like a wilderness raw but alive hence the appeal for jesus is natural and spontaneous because of his rawness simplicity he has touched millions of hearts who can understand him he is more than you but you are in him this is the beauty of jesus and buddha has his own beauty and the two differ from one another and both have influenced the humanity in their own way one who attains to meditation can easily understand the ways and means of both jesus as well as that of buddha one who attains to meditation tremendous fulfillment comes to him when i say one who attains to meditation meditation means oneness patience understanding being part of the whole ready to repent there are two aspects when you are repenting someone is there to forgive this process can be reversed you have the opportunity to forgive and when you use this opportunity to forgive you grow 
tremendously the dimension of the whole comes to you because one of the quality of God it is said he knows everybody's faults yet he never takes the revenges he pardons all of these this is a quality all these are the outcome of meditation and if you try to control you are always nervous because deep down the turmoil is still hidden if you are uncontrollable flowing and alive then you cannot be nervous there is no question of being nervous whatsoever happens is acceptable you have no expectation for the future you are not performing then why should you be nervous if you go to catholic jain buddhist monk or your so called religions in the temples you will find the people very nervous maybe they may not be so nervous in their monasteries but if you bring them out into the world you will find them very very nervous because each step there is temptation as they travels through life's roads there is temptation and this creates uneasiness for them a man of meditation comes to a point where there is no temptation left try to understand this temptation never comes from outside all temptation represent the repressed desires repressed energy repressed anger repressed sex repressed greed within and that creates temptation and great uneasiness to overcome is the way of meditation you will recall when jesus was at the mount double satan came to him and he tried to tempt him in many ways but he could not succeed he said it is written in the scripture if you jump from the mountain angels will protect you he said certainly it is written in the scriptures but it is also written you do not put your beloved your lord into trouble knowingly if it happens by accident you fell from the mountain certain or you get into a problem certainly forces from all around will come to protect you if you have not experienced this then you have to be open every moment something like this happens when you are in a difficult situation unable to make a decision all of a sudden you open a page and a message comes in you do not choose these messages posts that you post on your timeline or your social media just like that it is the tremendous blessing that on a particular moment when you need something it comes to you 
Now it is up to you to accept it. Try to understand this. And that is the part of the meditation. All temptation lies within. Repressed desires, repressed energy, repressed anger, repressed sex, repressed greed within and that creates temptation and great uneasiness. Temptation comes from within. It has nothing to do with the outside. It is not that devil comes to tempt you as has been conceived and told you. It is your own repressed and unconditioned mind that becomes devilish and want to take revenge. To control that mind, one has to remain so cold and frozen that no life energy is allowed to move into your limbs or into your body then you freeze. If energy is allowed to move those repressions will surface. That is why people have learned how to be cold, how to touch others and not touch them, how to see people yet not see them. People live with cliché and go on saying, hello, how are you? But nobody means anything. The words are empty. These are just to avoid the real encounter of two persons. People do not look into each other's eyes they do not hold hands and they do not try to feel each other's energy while greeting one another. This is a season of seasons. Great energy searches into it. If you are meditative, you are greeting someone with a tremendous warmth an awareness, you will allow something to happen. They do not even allow each other to pour. Each remains very much afraid and somehow they are just managing cold and dead. A man of meditation has learned how to be full of energy at its optimum level, overflowing, he lives at the peak as his abode. This peak of the energy becomes his abode. Certainly he has warmth, but this warmth is not feverish. It only shows life. He is not hot. Instead, he is cool because he is not carried away by the desires, by the temptations. He is so happy that he, has, he is no longer seeking any happiness through interacting with you or a particular event or circumstances or situation, nothing can enhance his happiness, nothing can enhance his state of bliss because he has reached to the peak, the optimum, the infinite has happened. Holding your hand will benefit you, not him because his energy is overflowing at its peak. He is so happy that he is no longer seeking any more happiness. He is so much at ease or at home that he is not going anywhere. He is not running. 
and chasing instant he is very cool and yet very warm this is this you may call a paradox he is overflowing do not try to change your actions instead try to find out your being and actions will follow that the action is secondary while being is primary action is something that you do being is something that you are your presence actions comes out of you action is just a fragment even if all of your actions are collected together they will not be equal to your being because all actions collected together will be your past all actions collected together will be your past what about your future your being contains your past your future and your present as well your being contains your eternity your actions even if all collected will just be of the past past is limited future is unlimited it is unborn that which has happened is limited it can be defined it has already happened and that which has not happened is unlimited and undefinable it is undefinable your being contains eternity your actions contain only the past so it is possible that a man who has been a sinner up to now up to this moment can become a saint the next moment it's a matter of light you allow to descend into you but it is only up to you whether you allow it to descend into you or not it is said according to hindu scriptures long time when you were you and i was not there the creation as we know was not there there was a robber named ratnakar he used to live in the forest and whosoever were passing through that he used to rob them and used to make his living through that ratnakar was his name he was happy he had a family and for the maintenance of his family he used to do this act one day it happened the wandering sage narad happened to pass by that site the status of narad in hindu philosophy hindu way is similar to israel is salam according to sufi terminology narad happened to pass so ratnakar captured him at this narad asked him a question why are you doing all these acts robbing the people things like these he said i am doing this for the maintenance of my family narad asked him acts you are doing the benefit of these goes to your family there is a another aspect of it when you do an action there is a punishment for it are your family members who are enjoying this very moment the money that you thus gain will they bear the 
punishment when it comes your way. Ratnakar never thought of that. At this, he thought that the sage is trying to evade. So he, Narad told him, I will stay here. I want you to go and ask the answer to this question from your family members. And when you come back, I will be here. So Ratnakar said, you are trying a trick on me. And as I go to inquire from the family members, you will escape. Narad said, I will not. You can tie me to a tree and I will remain there until you return. He did so. The energy of Narad was such that he could not avoid. The time was coming closer for his transformation. It is a very delicate moment. When a moment comes for the final stage of transformation, one becomes vulnerable. Ratnakar tied Narad to the tree and went home. He asked his father, mother, wife and children, it is for your sake that I am engaged in this action of robbing the people, the passers-by, the people in the forest. Will you partake in the punishment the way you partake in the games that the money that comes in? One by one, everyone refused. It was for his family members that he was living and he thought they will share in his happiness and sorrow, but they are ready to share his happiness, but not when it comes to the moment of pain. He returns. He opened the sage, fell at his feet, and he said, you are right. None of them are ready to bear even the slightest, even an iota of the suffering when it comes out of this action. Find me a way to transcend. He was an uneducated robber. What can he be told? What meditation technique? What can he be given so that there is transformation in him? So Sage Narad gives him a word to use it as mantra. What was very clear to him, what was known, what was the way of this robber was Mara. Mara means dead. He said, I would like you to repeat this word Mara. When you say Mara, 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 it becomes in between when these, this note, this word Mara is said three times. Maram, Maram, Maram. The sound that you get final is Ram. He wanted him, he wanted to get his heart kindled up with light. So he told him to repeat the word Mara because it is very close to his heart. This he had been doing all through his life. When he said three times, it became Ram. He went into meditation, he sat and continued. Aunts created a nest in his body the dust and in that ultimately he become the learned. He came to be known as Sage Balmiki, who during the time when the Hindu incarnation Ram happened, he was his contemporary, 
he wrote composed the first Hindu scripture Ramayan Balmiki past is un is limited future is unlimited you do not know which future is unlimited and unknown it is indefinable your being contains eternity and your actions contain only your past so it is possible that a man who has been a sinner up to now to this very moment can become a saint to the next all that has been causing the actions is no more but you sh should be ready to allow this light to descend in you suddenly an inward turn takes place never judge a man by his actions instead judge the man by his being sinners have become saints and saints have fallen and become sinners each saint has a past and each sinner has a future each saint has a past and each sinner has a future never judge a man by his actions actions are like dried leaves that are no more needed on the tree of consciousness when the leaves are no more needed in this season of autumn the leaves turn gold and fall and leaves that have fallen that decompose and further nourish the tree in its process and actions are like dried leaves that are no more needed on the tree of consciousness but there is no other way because you have not known even your own being how can you see the beings of the others once you know your own being you will learn the language you will know the clue how to look into another being you can see into others only to the extent that you can see into yourself if you have seen yourself through and through you become capable of seeing into the others through and through as well and that is where the meditation attains to fulfillment and meditation when there is no temptation you are able to see through and through you and once you are able to see through your actions you are ready to dissolve ready to allow the light to descend into you you can see through the actions of the others only then you are able to see through the actions of the others